Our goal for today is to photo scan our studio and the loading dock and basically get a 3D model and a digital recreation of our entire workspace for further use. Today, we're with Chris, who works at Leica, and he has brought a very special piece of technology that I've just been oogling over for many, many years here. So this is the Leica BLK360. Uh, it's a 3D scanner using LiDAR. Uh, it's also got you know, HDR imagery capabilities, um, you know, typically used you know, more in the construction space and uh, capturing 3D scenes, but you know, to a couple millimeter accuracy. Uh, but you know, now we're starting to get into getting some traction in the uh, visual effects industry, and that's why we kind of teamed up with you guys to try and check out some of those workflows. Previously, when we film a video, like Boston Dynamics, for example, when we have to render out our 3D models of characters, we'll use something like uh, an Insta360 camera here because basically we can take multiple photos of an environment and create an HDR image. And that HDR image allows us to relight the environment and basically tell, where, tell our 3D models where the light sources are. And it also adds realistic reflections for that real world environment. So the whole Boston Dynamics videos, you can watch this. Um, every single shot of the robot there is using an HDR map that we took during that shot on set. And that's what helps those robots just blend in so well with the environment. But what's the, what, what is the main difference with this and that? I mean, I the big difference is we're actually using you know, LiDAR. How does LiDAR work? So LiDAR, it's using a, a laser from the inside. As you can see here, uh, the laser's on the inside and it hits this mirror, this 45 degree angle mirror. Then that mirror spins and it shoots out a you know, laser point and using you know, time of flight technology, it's bouncing back and takes a measured data point. And so uh, the data itself is actually scaled. Um, but because of that, you know, as this as this rotates, then this whole thing spins. You've got a single laser beam kind of going like this, mm -hmm. and then it scan you know rotates 180 degrees. But then you're collecting you know full 360 because you're capturing that slice all at once. Gotcha. So that makes it so it can yeah so it can reconstruct the space in three dimensions instead yep. of just two. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, is there a camera on this as well then somewhere? So yeah, there actually is. Uh, there's three cameras right here. Um, so as it goes around, you know, it's first stage, it goes around, each one takes a, a snapshot. If you got the HDR turned on, it's three stage, so each one will you know, fire off at three different lighting settings. And, um, and then as that goes around, it does 10 stops, so you essentially end up with 30 photos that are stitched together into, a, you know, one, um, like, total of 150 megapixel image. Okay, today we're going to go space to space here and scan our studio. And then next time we have to film anything here or maybe even use this 3D model we've created, we have it right here on hand. Um, do you want to actually go to the loading dock first and start sure. there? So, Because yeah. I think that we can get some really good explanation and context of uh, yeah. the just, just really what makes this special versus our current process. Sure. Cool. Here in our loading dock, I, I can give you guys the best example of why this technology is really special to us. When we filmed our Boston Dynamics video, in order to get that robot looking like it's naturally in the scene, we would take our Insta360 cameras and we would scan a 360 HDR of this environment. And that, that image basically allows us to separate the bright points from the dark points and basically light our scene. So if you look around here, you can see there's like some lights there, we got some lights up here, you know, and it, it basically, yeah, it's able to tell us where our, our, our light sources are coming from. However, there was one small issue that led us to have to basically redo that lighting. So and when you have an issue like this, where you have a scene that has a, uh, a single top light, when you scan your HDR, whenever the uh, character is standing directly beneath the light, it's gonna look completely natural. But suddenly, if the character steps in 3D space away from it, that, that 360 HDR, it's not gonna move away. It's gonna stick with your scene. So when it came time to render that video and, and light it and do all that stuff, we had to basically go through and in three dimensions, put light sources back where they were. So that made it so we couldn't like actually rely on just our image map to recreate the scene. However, when you start using this and you have the LiDAR that actually scans your environment in three dimensions, you can feasibly have a, uh, a fully functioning 3D lighting environment that allows any characters to walk around in it and have the light sources react appropriately. 
It's a long-winded explanation, but I feel like that's as concise as I can possibly make it. <laughs> but for real. So yeah, basically it makes it so your lights stick where they need to be. Um, so you want, let's, let's try a scan here. So yeah. we do have you know, a few different settings if you want on here. We can do you know, low res, medium res, high res. So that's just the number of, of actual points you're taking. Um, you know, then you can change the, the imagery to be LDR or HDR. So you know, the longer, the, the higher resolution the actual point cloud is, the longer it takes. So it can range anywhere from you know, a 40 second scan all the way up to about six minute scan, depending on the settings you use. It'd be great to do like the HDR scan yeah. because I, I'm okay with the extra data sure. because we can definitely use it. Scanning, if we did HDR take about you know, four, four minutes. All right. Yeah. By the way, the, the musician upstairs is playing some extra like techno technology driven music right now, so it's perfect. Driven, driven, driven music. music. Inspired by technology. Inspired by technology. <laughs> All, right, uh, All right. I guess I'll see you guys uh, on the other side. See you guys cool. in 420. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so the scan's done. How many scans was that? Like we went through the loading dock, through the hallway studio, and a couple of the, the cool rooms here. Yeah, so we did about, uh, about 13, 14 scans. Oh my gosh, uh, all right, so we're gonna put all this data together. Sure, so in yeah, the process, we can usually say registration, um, alignment, stitching together. When I say any of those, I mean all the same thing. It's, you know, all these scans really don't know where they are in, in 3D space, so it all comes to overlapping data. So every time we set it up, we make sure there's, there's overlapping data between those, and then essentially like putting a puzzle together. Mm -hmm. um, we just have to pretty much help it out a little bit. So here's an example of uh, a top-down view of the scans we've taken. These chunks, this chunk over here is one bundle um, that's all been together, and I've got two, uh, two other scans that have not been registered yet. So all I have to do, I know this was over in front of the, the Airsoft, um, stuff. So if I just hit this link, press this scan right here, we've now got this top down just between these two and we'll hit optimize and just see it snaps them together. We hit create link. So we'll do that one more time with this scan over here. Just get it close to where it should be. Say, Hey, register with that one, hit optimize. And it snaps it together. Oh my God. Create link. That's, That's so <laughs> stupidly easy looking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cause like, each one of these files though is like super dense. There's like millions of points. Like they, they have to be huge file sizes. How the heck does this like work so quickly to yeah. align that stuff? So what we're seeing here, this isn't fully processed data yet. It's just a, a low, low res kind of preview image. So okay. the, the raw data, you know, it's sitting on the, the BLK, then it transfers it over and just kind of initially does a process to it. Cause yeah, to fully process it, it can't quite handle it all on the, on the iPad Pro. Um, so once I dump this off onto the laptop, um, we'll finish processing and then that's when it'll like fully essentially unzip all the, the real data. So, um, yeah, this is just previewed stuff. That's, that's super cool. Yeah. But like, then, cause, cause honestly, like of all the scans we've done though, like piecing multiple scans together is by far the most difficult thing I've, I've ever tried to do because like, sure. Even if you're like, we have a flat area and sometimes like, it seems like you can connect them. The seams between the two, like segments, chunks, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. aren't, aren't even. So you have to kind of go through manually and like almost like polygon by polygon, like just connect every little tiny point. And there's millions of them. So it can yeah. be really, really lengthy. For sure. So like a really a good example though, is also like uh, when we were doing that anime self-driving cars video, yeah. when we did our full road scan, mm -hmm. um, we needed a longer road than the actual piece oh, we sure. scanned. So I ended up just duplicating it and aligning it. And, yep. and but the problem is, is that the, the, the road texture was pretty good yeah. that, we, that, we, that we got from the scan, but the seams kind of killed the whole thing, which, uh, sure. which led us to basically just making our own road over the whole uh, thing and just calling it a day. So it's, it's simpler. So there were still seams all over the place in the video, sure. but they're flying by so fast you can't see it. Yeah. But I, I wish there was like something like this when we were doing that. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit different you know, with those when it is already a mesh. This is because this is in a point cloud format right now too. It kind of meshes, well, shouldn't use meshing, but yeah. you know, it, it comes together a little bit more seamless. That's cool. Um, so yeah, so again, now it's just the, the point cloud and then depending on, you know, what you want to use it afterwards. I mean, you can do things like mesh this data and texture it, or like I said, using it for, for reference and, mm -hmm. and the HDR stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's exciting to explore all those options. So what's yeah. the next step with this? Do we know, or well, like the processing? Yeah, I mean, for us, like, yeah. oh, for our, 
us next steps like for what we we're trying to get to is like we're trying to get to having a full version of this model that we can use for upcoming videos and potentially even to you know use as a virtual tour for anyone who wants to see what our studio is like um so I, how do we get there because this is a lot of data Dude, this is a lot yeah. of data look at this yeah. like this is crazy so again this is just kind of like yeah low res preview of the data this will be all a lot more solid wow. but also kind of like a almost a little x-ray view it's so kind fun of thing. to just like yeah float around and see yeah it. once again I, I keep bringing up this boston dynamics video because yeah. we went the whole process we went through for this video sure. is like the complicated version of mm -hmm. what we just did of like having to rebuild the environment and measure everything and sure. project textures out and for us though like it's funny because when we're doing it we're saying you know, screw it. This is this. Is, these are all right angles. We're not measuring angles yeah. of anything. We're just assuming that everything is nice and straight. And so, throughout the whole process, we're noticing inconsistencies all over the place. And we're just like, eh, maybe, maybe we just suck and I can't figure this out. But right. like, no, it's like things are just slightly off in real yeah. life. Yeah, just like uh, when they try to recreate. If you recreate the Darth Vader helmet. Mm -hmm. Perfectly symmetrical. People are like that doesn't look quite right, you know, oh, because yeah. that, that original helmet was handmade, and there's inconsistencies, and so it's like that can't happen if you try and recreate something too perfectly. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Pick a point, tap the screen, and then oh my God, you know, you can find a point. Just yeah. You can just measure it. Oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah. And you can change it, obviously in units and stuff, but any anything you can see on here, you can wow. just pull a measurement on. You can I zoom this in is on construction. It. Yeah. yeah, exactly, that's and that's, awesome. like I said, that's, that's what it was so kind of made cool. for, but so many other applications you can... Oh, I just like how it's accurate, like, that, that idea of accuracy, mm -hmm. and, like, bringing a lot of the guesswork out of it is so cool. Absolutely. Well, I guess, so we have to process this data first yep. before we mess with it, because it's just a preview, mm -hmm. and then after that we get to figure out how we want to play with it. Yeah, absolutely. Next steps to come. Sweet. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Well, cool, guys. Yeah, Appreciate well, it. yeah, man, thank you so yeah. much for coming by, Absolutely. making the time to come out here. Yeah. I know, uh, uh, I know you have a packed schedule showing. Sure. Everyone wants to see this. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, I'm really glad we got to do this, and uh, hopefully uh, we can get this out to you guys, so that way you can take a look and see what our studio's like without having to fly out here. Yeah. Right. yeah. The most convenient or work thing. Here. Or work here. <laughs> yeah. Well, sweet. Appreciate it. <laughs> cool, man. Okay, sweet. That's